Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Envision Coworking, where you'll share an inspiring space with a community of creative and supportive people. Our speaker is Kieran Sweeney. Kieran is a successful businessman, international business trainer, motivational speaker, and author of the book, Thoughts. He has built three international businesses, spoken on stages all over the world, and is building a wellness retreat in the Caribbean. Kieran will speak on how he overcame huge business challenges by rope, uh, reprogramming his mind. Let's put our hands together and give a warm VBN welcome to Kieran Sweeney. Before we begin, uh, I'm going to ask everyone to please stand up. Please stand up. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is take your arms like this. And I'm going to ask you to go like this. Thank you. And do it again. And we're going to increase that. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Thank you. I just want to show my family I got a standing ovation. So how many of you want to have a guaranteed success blueprint? That's exciting. How many of you want to have a guaranteed success blueprint? Yeah. Thank you. And how many of you want to work less and earn more? Sounds exciting, yes? All right, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is when I ask you a question, I want you to give me an answer with a lot of energy. Can you do that? Thank you, I gotta stay on camera here. So when I ask you a question, give me a lot of energy because we're gonna be talking simply about energy tonight. And everything we do in life is about energy. Would you agree? Thank you. So how many of you wanna have a guaranteed success blueprint? Thank you, and how many of you would like to have, be able to work less and earn more? Thank you, and how many of you want both of that? Excellent, thank you. My name is Kieran Sweeney and welcome to how to use your mind to achieve anything. You can call this talk anything, but we're really gonna focus on the mind tonight. So what I want you to do is, first of all, take your hand and pat yourself on the shoulder and say, you're amazing for being here. And thank you, put your arms up like this, nice and high. Reach around, pat both your neighbors on the back and say congratulations for being here. Okay, thanks. Thanks for being here. I want to honor you. It's an absolutely beautiful day today, and uh, I, I predicted that a lot of people would show up simply because we're all in a good energy, because when the sun shines in Vancouver, everyone is happy. Yes or yes? Yes. Thank you. All right, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to delve into some uh, really uh, profound principles of the mind, things that I discovered when I was 31 years old that wasn't taught in school, and it allowed me to completely shift the course of my life. And it's allowed me to create a lot of uh, success, a lot of happiness, and a lot of really going for your dreams. And even today, at the age of 59, I'm still going for bigger dreams. Because life is meant to be lived fully. And it doesn't matter what type of obstacles will, you will face, because you will face them. They could be mental, emotional, physical jerks that you meet, things like that, but you're going to face obstacles in life, but how we, how we embrace those obstacles and how we utilize them to overcome the challenge and create success is what's fundamental. And everything that you uh, go for in life will result if you program your mind properly. So that's what we're gonna focus on tonight. You guys excited? Yes. Thank you. All right, so before we begin, can I tell you a little bit about my story? Excellent. So um, I was born in England. My parents are Irish. Um, moved to Canada when I was five years old. And I grew up in a pretty normal lower middle class family. And when I was growing up, I had this really strong desire to make money. Now, most of you are entrepreneurs. Did you, most of you have a desire to make money when you're young? Yes? yes? Thank you. And 
what happened was I decided that I was going to get a paper route. And at the age of 11, I bought a paper route in Toronto. And I ran that paper route for about six months and I was making about $15 a week. <clears throat> Pretty good money for a young 11 year old. So I decided I wanted to make more money. So I went out and bought another paper route. And then I bought another one. And then I bought another one. And then I bought another one. I had five paper routes. I had the largest paper route in the city of Toronto. I got all my friends to help me deliver the paper on the weekend because it was the big Saturday one. And so all my friends were involved and I learned the concept of leverage. And I take them to McDonald's and we go play pinball as a way to thank them. So all of a sudden I started to realize that making money was really easy. And so then I decided to uh, get a job and to uh, have a part-time job while at school. And so I love dogs and cats. So I worked at a dog kennel and I worked there for seven years while I went through high school. Then I went to uh, travel all over the world, I spent a year in Colombia, and then I traveled again and I went to China and I went here and I'm, all of a sudden I'm traveling all over the world. Then I decided it was time to settle down, get a degree, get some education and I did. I went and got a degree in international relations and I worked in Ford Affairs for about five years. Then the entrepreneurial bug came back and hit me. And in 1988, I bought the patent to a ski product. I took it to market and within a year I had made over half a million dollars. But the following year I hit a recession and everything just started to fall apart. So at the age of 31, after making a half a million dollars a year before, I found myself $80,000 in debt because all my clients were filing for bankruptcy, people weren't paying, checks were bouncing. And I started to get really frustrated and, and angry and upset about what was going on. Because I delivered product, I sold product, I did the job, and now I wasn't being paid. But something was really bothering me deep inside. And what it, happened, what it created was a, a, an, an emotional spiral that took me out of control. And it's at that time that I met a man who completely shifted my, my consciousness, my way of thinking, and that was Bob Proctor. I went to a seminar, and I spent a week with Bob Proctor, Jack Hanfield, Mark Victor Hansen, a gentleman by the name of Leyland Van Vanderwaal, and a guy named Bernie Dorman. And all of these guys became mentors in my life. And I spent a week with these guys. And the whole purpose of a week in this seminar, there's about 400 people there. The whole purpose of the week was to learn how to become a millionaire in one year. 400 people. One year later, nobody was a millionaire. But we got a lot of information. But eight years later, I became a millionaire through revenue, through land acquisition, and through really just going for it. But I realized in that one week that everything I do is just a decision. And everything I do, if I want to create wealth, I will create wealth. If I want to stay in a mediocre lifestyle, I'll stay in a mediocre, mediocre lifestyle. It's all really just how we think. And so also at that seminar, I met this guy named Milt Campbell. Now everybody has heard of Milt Campbell, yes? Does anybody know who Milt Campbell is? I didn't know who Milt Campbell was. But Milt Campbell was the greatest athlete in the world. You guys know that, right? No. No. But see, Milt Campbell was the greatest athlete in the world. In 1956, he was the first African-American to win the gold medal in the Olympic decathlon. You guys remember that, right? Yeah. So why doesn't anyone know who Milt Campbell is? He's the first African-American to win the gold medal in the Olympic decathlon. You get the title world's greatest athlete when you win that, and nobody knows him. But Mill achieved something in 1956. What was going on in 1956? Civil rights. He's black. Russia was invading Hungary. Israel occupied the Golan Heights. The world was in chaos over on that side of the world. He won the gold medal in Melbourne, Australia, on the opposite side of the world 20 hours 
before the news hit North America. But this guy gets on stage and he starts talking about how he won the gold medal. And he said from the age of about 10 or 12, he started to use this phrase, I'm the world's greatest athlete. I'm the world's greatest athlete. I'm the world's greatest athlete. I'm the greatest athlete in the world. I'm the world's greatest athlete. Every morning, throughout the day, at night, while he's training. And all of a sudden, he became the high school, state high school champion in New Jersey. And then he got invited to uh, Indiana University to try out for the uh, Olympic team. Made the Olympic team. Went to Helsinki, Finland in 1952. I'm the world's greatest athlete. He wins the silver medal. Did he stop? He just kept going. 1956, he wins the gold medal. He had won it after nine events. All he had to do was finish the 1500 meter. His worst event, but he did it. And that was it. Got the gold medal and nothing happened after that. He went on to play professional football, Cleveland Browns, played for the, uh, in the CFL for Hampton Tiger Cats, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Toronto Argonauts. And then he went back to the United States and he started working with inner city youth, mentoring and became a motivational speaker. But what he said at that talk stuck with me for my life. And he said, I just lied to myself. Now, he used that context so you'd get it. But he kept saying to his mind over and over again, I am the world's greatest athlete. I'm the world's greatest content videographer. I'm the world's greatest motivational speaker. I'm the world's greatest yoga something. <laughs> but what, whatever you are, become the greatest in your mind. Now I spoke for a very large international uh, company uh, for five years and the, the gentleman who ran the company was mentoring me and he said before I did my very first public talk, he said, just write on a little piece of paper, you're the greatest speaker in the world and always have it there. And so what happens is your subconscious mind will believe anything. So from the time you were born, you've been programmed, yes? Yeah. Okay, now remember, a lot of you have probably heard about this. The internet is giving us lots of information. It, it wasn't as available when I was 31. There was no internet that I knew of and, and it wasn't taught in school. But you may have heard a lot of this information before, but I'm gonna put it in a different context. And even though it may sound familiar, it's always good to relearn and, and refresh and renew. Yes? yes? Excellent. Thank you. All right. So this is your mind. Now, the mind, as you know, is divided into two parts. There is the conscious mind, and then there is the subconscious mind. So from the day we're born, we're constantly receiving these messages and thoughts, and we're being told how things are according to our culture, according to our parents' beliefs, according to the societal beliefs, whatever's around you, whatever you're being taught in school, whatever you're being taught in church, you're all being taught something that is based on the environment you live in. True or true? Thank you. Okay, so you're being taught positive things. So what type of positive things were you taught? Um, uh, um, eat, vegetables. eat vegetables, yes. <laughs> Excellent. What other positives were you taught? Uh, Not to litter, be polite. What else? Get a good job. Get a good job, yes. <laughs> you can do anything you put your mind to? Be grateful. What's that? Be grateful. Be grateful. Respect yourself as others. 
Respect yourself and others. Excellent. Thank you. Now we also got all these negative messages. So what kind of negative messages did you get? Don't get caught. Don't get caught. <laughs> That's a positive. <laughs> what else? What else did we get? Negative. Money doesn't grow on trees. That just pops up right away all the time. You got to work hard for money. Yes. What's that? You're not good enough. How many have ever been told they were not good enough? Raise your hand nice and high. Every hand should be up. Thank you. It's the number one reason that we don't have happiness and success is because we've all been programmed that we're not good enough. Did the person telling you that, were they good enough? <laughs> See, everything that's passed down is based on someone else's belief system. Yes or yes? It's their paradigm. A paradigm is simply a set of beliefs. Change the paradigm, change the beliefs. You can create a paradigm and live into it just like Milk Campbell did. Now, so these are all the subconscious positives and negative thoughts. And as you can see, I'm putting a lot of these red negatives in here because it's true, don't deny it, unless you've been reprogramming your mind and working on it on a daily basis from the time you wake up till the time you go to sleep, most of our minds are polluted with unsupportive thinking. Throughout the entire day, how many of you have a lot of unsupportive thoughts? Keep your hands up, Mike. Come on, everybody, stop lying. Now, how many of you have really positive thoughts constantly, all the time? all the time excellent that's good all we have to do is constantly put ourselves in a state of mind this is all tony robbins does he puts you in a state of mind and you stay in that state of mind you choose that state of mind where you want to be and you will create and manifest exactly what you're putting in that state of mind okay so so at all times, when? Say it nice and loud. All times. Thank you. At all times, we're going to be receiving positive and negative thoughts. So I'm going to give you a lot of positive uh, information tonight, and your mind is going to choose how it receives it. Okay? We're always getting positive messages. We're always getting negative messages. So. Some of the most successful people in the world have achieved the success they now enjoy by believing that they would be or they already were successful, regardless of what's going on in their, their world, their outer reality. To do this, just like Milt did, they took control of their mind. Your mind is a tool. What is it? Tool. Thank you. It's a tool. You replaced, you replace doubt when you want at will. So successful people always replace doubt and they said, yes, this will happen. This will happen. And we must constantly be in that state of mind. You've heard the term seeing the end in mind. The, the end exists already. What you want in life already exists in the spiritual realm. Now, your mind is a tool that you're either using or it's being used by you. If you feel defeated and disempowered by your dreams, you're, you're being used by your mind. And if other people and their own experiences are influencing you, that's influencing your mind in an, if they're unsupportive, then it's influencing your mind in an unsupportive way. So we have to really understand the power of our mind. Now back to Milk Campbell. I love this guy. He was this big six foot four, 230 pounds of muscle, good looking man, very charming and, and very charismatic on stage. And 
off stage, he was the same as me. Insecure, didn't get what he wanted, he thought. Still wishing he had have been on the box of Wheaties. Still wishing that he had got the accolades, the endorsements, the TV commercials. And that's when I realized, holy moly, this guy got the gold medal and he succeeded at becoming the greatest athlete in the world. But he still wanted more. And so for the rest of his life, he went out and he sought more. But it taught me a lesson. There are times in your life where you might hit that peak. And then that's it. That's it. You, you've achieved that. You got to the mountaintop. You're there. And we can still enjoy life and, and do other great things. But we're not always going to hit the peak all the time. And we have to learn to become happy with that. So this inspired me to become a film producer. I haven't got a clue how to produce a movie, but I am now a film producer. You see, I had this idea. I'm gonna write to his family and I'm gonna ask if I can produce a movie on his life. And they said yes, because of my relationship with him and how he impacted my life. And so now I have the life rights. I've hired a writer. We're currently writing the treatment, which will then become a screenplay. And then we're gonna raise the money. We're gonna produce this film and we're gonna win an Academy Award. I am the recipient of an Academy Award. No, seriously. Did you guys watch the Academy Awards this year? All right. I mean, I, I forget the gentleman's name, but the Korean uh, fella. I mean, he was just brilliant. And it was just so wonderful to watch him. Just, he reached his mountaintop. Three Academy Awards. Like, just brilliant. And I really felt him. And so, all of these people that we look at and, and we give accolades to for their achievements, it's like, well, I can do that too. I can do it. And all, what did they do differently? They just put their mind in a different state. And did they have challenges? Yes, lots of them. More than you probably have in your lifetime. But we overcome them. So I'm going to talk about eight powerful laws. And these are, uh, these are not new. These are universal laws. They have existed for a long time. And a lot of uh, my colleagues uh, speak about it uh, and I've learned it from them, but I've applied it in my life. And I've had some really cool things happen in my life. I'm currently uh, building a, an advanced uh, health and wellness retreat center in the Caribbean. And I'm currently raising money for it. And I've found the properties and I'm going to buy them. And then we're going to do some really cool advanced healing work. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm going to do the mindset stuff. And I'm going to bring other um, practitioners to do all the other elements of health. And, you know, for me, it's like, I'm a real believer in allopathic healthcare. And I've been involved in alternative health medicine, practicing it and using it for a long time. And now I want to bring everything together that I do in my teaching world and also uh, my beliefs around alternative health and show people that we can, we can heal. I mean, a friend of mine here in Vancouver cured himself of cancer just simply by switching to a plant-based diet. And so it's easy to do. And so, but it, it, a lot of it starts with how we think. So let's go back to that. Your thoughts are energy. What are they? Energy. Thank you. Raise your hand if you believe your thoughts are energy. Excellent. Thank you. And, you know, there's a couple of people in the room tonight. I'm going to ask them to just maybe speak at some point just quickly. But both of them doubted me at some point in time. But they're both here tonight. It's really interesting. But they doubted me. And they thought I was a little weird. They were right about that. 
but they, the way I thought was different, right? And, and they finally, through their own experiences life, started to realize that, hey, maybe what he's talking about really is true. So I'm on a mission in the world to, thanks for this video tonight, Roger, but you know, it's getting the message out there and just really uh, in, in getting people to think differently. And the world is shifting, the world's changing. There's a lot happening right now. And, and, but how we think and how we see the future is how it's ultimately going to become. So every thought you think is energy. It is real and every one of these thoughts has an impact on your physiology and on your life. Your life happens in accordance with your thoughts and this energy can be used to empower or disempower you. The positive energy of a positive thought sends an immediate positive vibration to every cell of your body, every cell. I know all the wellness people are like nodding their heads. Yes, I know that. Yeah. In the same way, a negative thought sends a negative energy, an immediate negative energy to every cell of your body. And so we must be consciously aware of this at all times. Even as practitioners, we have to really always be aware because when you're working with people, if you've got a negative thought going on inside, they're feeling it and you're not at the top of your game. So we have to constantly be in this zone, the state of mind. By consciously focusing your thoughts on positive outcomes, goals, and dreams using techniques such as meditation, visualization, and all the techniques I teach in my book, Thoughts, which you can download on Amazon, will train your mind to remain in a constant positive vibration. That to which you ultimately want to achieve in life, in business, in health, in relationships, it's all here. And it starts there. Now, there are times when unfortunate occurrences are going to happen. However, how you respond to these unfortunate occurrences is important. If you allow yourself to get sucked into a downward spiral of negative thinking, you will start to attract the outcome that is equivalent to that negative thinking. This is what happened to me in 1931. People were bouncing checks and I wasn't getting paid. And I got all negative and angry and guess what? I just attracted more of it. So on the opposite side, when you consciously focus your thoughts on a positive, more empowering outcome, you will begin to direct your thoughts toward that reality. I'll skip a few of that time. So let's talk about these laws. Is this good so far? Yep. Yes. A good reminder, yes? Tomorrow is going to be a brand new day. You're going to wake up different tomorrow. You'll be older, too. <laughs> Thoughts? Energy. Number two. Now, everyone's heard of this because of the movie, The Secret, but there's a law called the law of attraction. But I wanna talk about what that really is. I'm just gonna squish that in there, law of attraction. Okay. This is the most widely spoken law in the field I work in because uh, basically in mindset training, when the movie, The Secret came out, everyone started to really become a little bit more aware of law of attraction. However, there is more to understand about this law than like attracts like. You cannot just sit and meditate and expect a bag of money to drop on your lap. You cannot just expect that you're gonna get that dream job or you're gonna get that million dollar client or you're gonna find your soulmate or you're gonna move into the home of your dreams. Everything is a result of what? Thank you, who said that? Thank you. Everything is a result of action. All of your thoughts immediately create an emotion. And then it's up to us to decide, do we take action or do we just sit around and wish and hope or let fear stop us or wait until everything is just perfectly lined up before I execute that business plan. There's a, there's a concept, uh, I, th I think it was Tony who came up with this one. Can't remember, but whoever it was, congratulate you.
you're allowed to make mistakes when you're a public speaker. It's okay. Ready, fire, aim. What's the words? Ready, fire, aim. Thank you. Ready, fire, aim. Not ready, aim, fire. We have a great idea, get a few things in order, and boom, take it out to the market and adjust as we go. Ready, fire, aim. When we do this, that's when the whole law of attraction starts to happen because we start to put the energy out there of what we're wanting to create in our business. So the secret is, is as I go through these laws, is to understand that they all interact with each other. And if we just do all eight and concentrate, focusing on doing all eight every day of our lives, things are going to start to line up beautifully. And you're just going to see things starting to really fall into place. So rather than think law of attraction, think frequency. What's the word? You are an energetic being. You're constantly vibrating at a certain level. Right now, my vibrational level is high because I'm standing up here. I'm speaking. I'm passionate about what I'm speaking about, and I'm just really at a good vibration right now. But we're all vibrating at all times, yes? So when you, uh, when you start to understand that everything is, is currently at a frequency in life, everything is energy, so everything has a frequency, all you have to do is get in alignment with that frequency. And I'm going to go into this a little deeper later. But the whole part of this is to understand that you are a vibrational being. You're an energetic being. At the subatomic level, at the quantum level, you are just energy. That's it. And in the context of the universe and the galaxies and the super galaxies, we are just a little minute piece of energy. But the cool thing is, we are one. Everything exists in all the universes and the galaxies out there is just one energy. It's the same, it's energy. And energy can never be created nor destroyed. So with the energy you have inside of you, you have the possibility to create magnificence if you choose. It's a choice. So everybody go like this. Go. I think go up here. I'm doing this. Keep going. I'm doing this to allow you to understand that you're just constantly in choice of where you want to vibrate. So let's go up here. All you are is just a vibrating energy. That's all you are. Okay? So just turn to your neighbor, look him in the eye, give him a high five and say, you're an awesome vibrator. They always giggle. What did you mind? What, what were you thinking? So, let's talk about law of thought control. You have the ability to accept and en entertain a thought, or you have the ability to dismiss a thought. So, back to our little guy here. Person, I should say. We get a positive thought, negative thought. We have the choice whether to accept it or dismiss it. You control your thoughts. Say, I control my thoughts. I control my thoughts. In fact, let's do an anchor here. Everybody take their fingers like this, put it against your temples and say, I control my thoughts. I control my thoughts. Knowing this, this is an immense power you have at your disposal when determining the outcome of the life you want to live. When a thought enters your conscious mind, you have the ability to filter that thought. If the thought is empowering and supports your desired reality, accept it. The subconscious mind will accept any thought you give it, uh, that you allow, and knowing that you can accept or dismiss any thought gives you the mind power to focus your thoughts on exactly what you want to create and manifest in your life. Would you agree? Thank you. All right. Let's talk about the next law. Number three was? It was uh, thought control, right? OK. 
Okay, and then control. Yeah, so frequency was up here with law of attraction. I put it up there. It's not a law, it's just a little more information about it. Okay, so law of thought control. And then we have, I like this one. So law of insertion. You have the power to insert into your mind whatever you want. So with this knowledge that you have the power to control your thoughts, you can also insert empowering thoughts into the subconscious mind simply by replacing an unsupportive thought with a supportive, more empowering thought. So when you have that negative unsupportive thought coming into your mind or somebody says something, you stop. I'm not accepting that. I'm going to reframe that. I'm going to place the opposite, more empowering thought into my mind. This is where thought control really happens that you insert that thought. You're all human beings on this planet and out of a, you know, a billion sperm cells, you won the race. So all of you were created. There were thousands of millions of other sperm cells swimming inside your mother's womb and ovaries and boom, you, someone got together. Why? Why was it that sperm and that egg? Why? Because you're a winner. That's right. Out of that one sperm, you won. Think about it. What if that one sperm didn't get there and the other one did? You wouldn't be exactly the same. So, two people got together. They met, they thought, I like that person. Law of attraction, vibration, frequency, feel something for each other. Law of thought control, let's make a baby. Law of insertion. <laughs> so you were created out of a thought and they, your parents decided out of love to create you. So that means you're what? Love. You're dislove. And so we got all these problems in the world. And if we just focus on loving each other instead of fighting and conflict and all this nonsense that's created by politics and religion, and every human being on the planet was created out of love, all we have to do is choose to love everybody else. Yes or yes. So turn to the person next and say, I love you. <laughs> Let's talk about the next law. Law of interconnectedness. Are you open to questions? I am. When uh, can we do it at the end? That would be great. Law, because sometimes I actually answer the question by teaching. All right, that's number five, yes? All right, your inner reality and your outer reality are connected. So what's going on inside, inside of you, your thoughts and your feelings, that's your inner reality. What's going on outside, our environment is the outer reality. What's happening in your outer reality is a reflection of what's happening in your inner reality. So let me repeat that, it's important. What's happening in your outer reality is a reflection of what's happening in your inner reality. In other words, you become what you think about. And when you focus your thoughts and feelings in more empowering ways, thinking about what you want, the life you want to create, the person you want to become, you will see the manifestations of that inner thinking in your outer reality. Milt Campbell, I'm the greatest athlete in the world. 
Do you know what kind of belief and power it takes to hold on to that? To get up every morning and train, to, to eat the right foods, to do what is required, the mental, the emotional, the physical, what it took to achieve that, it, it, it took a lot. But it's simply the choice we make. Whatever you're working on, whatever dream you're chasing, really hone in on it. Use those mantras that I am whatever it is you want to be and believe it because it's going to happen. It has to happen. Why does it have to happen? Because it's the law. We just have to utilize the laws. I wanted to become a TED speaker. I had this idea. I put everything in place mentally, put it out there, started focusing on it, and eventually found Roger. See, I attracted Roger. And I became a speaker on the TEDx platform. Everything I've wanted in life, where I put my energy, it, I created it. And here's the interesting part, and this was the realization that I really got about how powerful this was, is because everything that I put my attention on, whether it was positive or negative, I got it. And so it takes a lot of work. And even though I teach this material, I got to work at it too. Bob Proctor gets up every morning, he reads a page out of Think and Grow Rich. Reset the mind. Because unfortunately, we had a lot of stuff happen in the mind. And some of us like to play in that poor me world. But we can't. It's not going to serve us. It's just going to attract more of it. And so really take this to heart tonight. And, and starting tonight, not tomorrow, starting tonight, really take it to heart and start putting these laws into effect. So that's the law. Did I talk about the law of interconnectedness? Yes, I did. All right. So the next one, six, law of Okay, law of manifestation. This law refers to the results which occur once the above laws that I've spoken about have been acknowledged and utilized as tools versus hindrances. Everything in creation is a manifestation of energy, yes? Nothing is new. Nothing in our universe is new. Everything is a recreation of the old. It's a rearrangement of the old. It's just energy being rearranged. Does that make sense? So everything in creation is a manifestation of energy. When a seed, energy, is planted in soil, energy, and nurtured by the soil, water, energy, sunlight, energy. What manifests is a genetic recreation of the DNA of that tree or plant or flower. So think of your thoughts as seeds when planted and they're planted in the ether, which is the soil. And we nurture that seed, that thought with positive powers, visualization techniques, repeating mantras, affirmations, but more importantly, the constant belief in the forefront of your mind that this will be created. This will happen. Okay? Yes? Mm -hmm. yes. Understand that the subconscious mind is connected to source because energetically, we are from the same source. So your subconscious mind is part of source. And all you have to do is nurture that planted seed of thought.
Now, what I'd like you to do is, I did this last year. I spoke at Man Talks in January, and I asked everybody to write down one goal that they were going to achieve in 2019. And I said to them, on January, whatever the day was, I think it was like around the 8th or 12th, I can't remember, I want you to text me. And I want you to tell me the goals that you wrote down. I had them write about three of them. I want you to text me and tell me what happened. Now, there was probably 60 people in the room. Four people texted me. What's the difference between those four people and the other 56? Action. They took action, accountability. What else? Believers. Believers. What else? They did it. Most people just don't do it. They go to a talk, they'll go to a meetup, they'll go to a, a Burnaby event, <laughs> have breakfast, but they won't take action. They won't implement, they won't put it into their lives. And the, the thing is with most entrepreneurs who are starting, there's a tendency to have a deep lack of belief in yourself. And that is the most important thing to overcome is your belief in who you are. Let's go back to how you were created. How were you created? Out of love. You are an absolutely amazing creation. You won the race. You got there first. You've been gifted with this life. I can't explain what life is. All I know is it's just a freaking good ride. And I'm having the most fun with it. I've been to over 130 countries. I've been... Uh, I've, I've done some amazing things and, and I'm not done. I've traveled all over the world. I've spoken on stages all over the world. Every, everything I wanted to do, I just said, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to create it. And I did. I went from being an unknown speaker to one of the biggest stages in the world. Second to uh, Tony Robbins was probably the biggest per, uh, personal development and bu business training company. And, and it's because I just created it. I wanted it to happen. I believed I could be that person and I, de I became it. So all of this really works. And I, I can only come from my experience as you can only come from your experience in life. But if you put it to, into action, it's gonna happen. Right? I wasn't born into wealth. I wasn't born into you know, easy roads or anything like that. It's just, it's hard work. But how many of you have a product or service that you believe in your heart that can help thousands of people in a positive way? Excellent. Then it's your duty, it's your dharma to do it. It's your duty to go out there and promote it and, and, and let people know what you do. And don't try to be better than anybody else. Be different than everyone else. You got to find a way to be different. That's how you get noticed in life. Jim Carrey. <laughs> An utter madman. But you know what? He created success because he was different. You know, that's just all acting. It's just all acting. That's all he does. He's not like that every day. Well, <laughs> but you just have to be different in business. Stand out. Focus on being different. You'll get noticed. All right, next law, number seven. You guys enjoying this? Yes. Excellent, thank you. Number seven. I like speaking for Rogers group. This law, oh, I didn't write it down. Law of emergence. Actually, um, when I came across this one, I started to really realize that law of attraction is great, vibrational energy, staying in that frequency. But the law of emergence really spoke to me, and here's why. This law refers to the fact that all desires that you wish to achieve are emerging. I'm the greatest athlete of the world. It was emerging. Once you've decided on the fruits of what you want to achieve, 
you set in motion through your actions the necessary steps to achieve the outcome with the knowing that each step is part of the desired outcome merging into reality. Basically, things take time. And when we operate from the belief of that to which I want is emerging and will be created, we can embrace a new sense of happiness, which comes from a knowing that our goal is emerging into reality. This gives you comfort knowing things take time. You wanna bake a cake? It takes time. There's prep time, cooking time, resting time. Everything takes time. Our businesses are not going to just be an overnight success. An overnight success takes about five to 10 years. So we have to be patient. We have to be willing to go through the emerging cycle, knowing that the final outcome will be a successful business, a successful you, a loving relationship. Whatever it is you want to have, it's out there. But we have to do the work here, here, and there. We have to believe that through our minds, our thoughts, our emotions, and a connection to a higher source that this will happen. And the cool thing about this is that the more you focus on staying connected to a higher source of energy, you're going to start to see things happen really quickly. <coughs> Energy travels in the form of vibration and every vibration is energy. The final law, you want to keep John? Welcome back, by the way. I think I met you a year ago. Law of Um, last year, I did a talk. I did a talk for Vancouver Business Network. Uh, I think it was on sales and influence, and I incorporated this into how to sell. So go on to this. Uh, what's the? It's the Vancouver Business Network YouTube channel. Yeah, and go on there, and you can watch it. There's it about a year ago I did it, but it's the same law, but I applied it in sales. It's really worth watching because you're all business people. So this law refers to vibrational frequency and how energy synchronizes with like energy. In the context of all thought, your thought energy entrains with the physical form of that to which you desire. Let's use rhythm to illustrate this law. Energy travels in the form of vibration and every vibration is energy. The law of entrainment states that when two objects vibrate at the same level of vibration or frequency, they will produce a coherent vibration. If you put two metronomes side by side and you start one metronome from the left and the other to the right, they will begin to swing in different directions. However, within 24 hours, they will swing in unison. Take two old watches that you wind up with a, with a uh, second hand, set them about five minutes apart, put them side by side. With a few days, they will be synchronized same time. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> Wanna hear something else? Put eight women in the same house living together their menstrual cycles start to come in, in alignment. <laughs> Wasn't living with eight women, trust me. <laughs> now I read about it. So, <laughs> all the giggles. But the fact is it's just energy. That's all we are and everything is energy. So everything will start to synchronize. So the point of this is if the metronomes and the watches and biological cycles can come together in free, same alignment, then is it possible that the thoughts of the person you want to become 
the business you desire to have as a seven or eight figure revenue business, is it possible by focusing on that in the present and also in the future that, that it can come into alignment? Is it possible? 100%. So with respect to thoughts, if you are a negative person who thinks negatively, if you're a procrastinator or an excuse generator, then you'll entrain the result to match the negative action you've taken. When you direct your thoughts in a positive manner and focus them on what you want to attract in life and use your mind power to entrain with the physical outcome, you'll be amazed at what happens. Remember though to be patient because things do take time. Now, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Tell me what you would like to have in life, somebody. A giant palace made of bamboo in the South Africa. So a bamboo palace. I like that. Bamboo palace. We're gonna have one too. Okay, somebody else, something, anything. Doesn't have to be material, just anything. Ooh, I love you, 100. I'm going for 150. We'll go together, okay? All right, anybody else? A mega yacht. Well, we already had yours, mega yacht. <laughs> yes? Just a matching material? No. Uh, a global education business. Global education business. So global, what kind of education? Transformational education for kids. Excellent. Love it. Connect with Sam Blythe. You know him? Connect with Sam Blythe. Model him. The one that to be the cause of one billion positive actions in the year 2030. Okay. I love it. You got your, you're already working on that, right? Okay. You starting to believe it's going to happen? <laughs> One more. Sir? I want to have uh, a great health and wellness company to transform people's lives. You want to have a great, is that what you said? Great health and wellness marketplace. Marketplace. Okay. Marketplace. I'll just do a brief. Okay. So here's the idea with this. Bamboo Palace. One hundred. Global business education. Global education business. I'll put business education. Sorry. Okay. Um, one. Put it down here. One billion positive actions, okay. And health and wellness marketplace. Okay. Ready? Yes. Present. Now. Future. Okay. This is your current reality. This is what you want to have. This is your desired reality. This is a place in time. This is a now. This is a future. What is a bamboo palace? Energy. Energy. What is a hundred? Energy. What is a global educational business? What is one billion positive actions? What is health and wellness marketplace? Thank you. That's in the now. In the future, what is a bamboo palace? What is a hundred? What is a global business education school? What is a hundred positive, one billion positive actions? And health and wellness marketplace? It's all just energy. So, 
every day. Matthew, meditate, think, do, believe, affirmations, mantras, breathing, breathing. everything energetically, visually, make pictures of it. Everybody ever do vision boards? Yeah. Okay. Want to hear a really cool story really quickly? So I have four kids. I did a visual board in 1999, vision board. I had two kids. Five years later, I looked at the vision board. There were four kids on the vision board. At the time I had two boys, there was two girls on that vision board. They weren't created when I made the vision board. I had no idea that we were gonna have two girls. We just didn't even really put much thought to it. Thought we were done with kids, but it was on the board. Everything I've created in life is on that board now. So this is very powerful stuff and we have to start to really believe it. But energy, you want to be 100, you just focus all your thoughts and beliefs and willings and doing what you have to do. Energetically, start doing it. But remember, you can't just sit there and visualize and meditate and expect it all to happen. It takes massive amounts of action because action is also energy, yes? But along with doing the physical action, we must maintain at all times the belief the thoughts, the meditation on it, the visualization, all of that. Go create the life you were born to create. If you believe that you won that race to do something significant, then just go do it because it will happen. You need money, you'll find the money. You need the people, you'll find the people. They'll come. It's all, it's attraction. But the sooner you put the energy out there, the faster it's going to start to come towards you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. So give me this little guy now. Oh, I need to, I need to address you. So thank you, Karen. And uh, thank you uh, uh, to uh, Simon. Uh, our host tonight. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, the time and the trust that you have demonstrated by being here is very much appreciated. Please join us again next week for John. In the meantime, uh, we have to be out of here to keep our word to Simon by nine o'clock. So I'm going to start unpacking. But in the meantime, uh, Kieran is going to be here if you want to have one-on-one -on -one chit chats with him or with each other and please complete in your integrity commitments. Thank you, good night, and have a great entrepreneurial week.